All right, welcome to our scene on Myasthenia Gravis, represented by this mouse over here with the grave on his back, the tiny grave. He likes to walk around with a tiny grave on his back. Mouse, tiny grave, mouse, tiny grave for Myasthenia Gravis. All right, so let's talk about the pathophysiology and symptoms of Myasthenia Gravis. And I'm actually going to start off with the symptoms, because that's what we see right over here. But the scene is the following. So we have this mouse who came to the doctor. He came to the doctor. That's the doctor right there. And he complains. And he says he has muscle weakness. He has muscle weakness. Usually he carries around this tiny grave and he's fine. But he started to show muscle weakness with it. Muscle weakness that progresses and gets worse over the day. In myasthenia gravis, there's a muscle weakness that progresses and gets worse with muscle exertion. We see that he has ptosis in his eyes. He has very droopy eyelids to help us remember the ptosis that's associated with that muscle weakness, along with the dysphagia, his difficulty eating. The doctor did a test and asked him to look at a picture of this thymus on the wall over here, the thymus on the wall, and he had double vision. He saw two of them. He saw two of them to help us remember the double vision seen in myasthenia gravis. And we chose the thymus specifically as myasthenia gravis is associated with the thymus, associated with thymic hyperplasia and thymoma. Okay, fine. The lungs here on the floor is kind of random, and they're exploding to help us remember the respiratory death. Patients with myasthenia gravis may have a crisis, and it may lead to respiratory failure. So the doctor did a final test. He took an imaging of the mouse's neurons. Here is one neuron. Here's another neuron. This is the synapse. This is the presynaptic neuron, and this is a postsynaptic neuron. Usually what happens is that the seagull cola, here's the seagull and the cola for acetylcholine, goes from one neuron to the next. And this is the receptor, the hand receiving the seagull cola, the acetylcholine. Here we see it exploding. This, this is what he saw in the imaging. He saw the hand exploding, the receptor exploding. That's what happens in myasthenia gravis. The acetylcholine receptor on the postsynaptic membrane is defective. There are antibodies against it. And that's why the primary treatment for myasthenia gravis is acetylcholine esterase inhibitor. It blocks the breakdown of acetylcholine, and thus there's more acetylcholine available to attach. So even if the, the receptors may be down, there's more acetylcholine available to bind. But in case of crisis, plasmapheresis may be administered to remove the antibodies from the blood, as well as thymectomy, since the thymus, as we mentioned, is often involved. All right, that's our scene on myasthenia gravis. I hope you enjoyed. All righty, take care.